Good evening, good evening, good evening. Hello there, how are we all? Uh, if you've been watching two minutes ago, you'd have seen me already. <laughs> if you've just tuned in, hello. Uh, yes, it's Tuesday. It's uh, the 17th of June. Looked at my screen there. 17th of June, 2014. You're watching Vapor Child's TV and this is Vapor Scene. Yes. So today I have uh, the usual mixture. Uh, I've got a couple of news stories um, and I've got something from the States, a bit of VT from the States, um, which as I said pre-show is um, kind of funny at the same time as being kind of sad. Yeah, I, you'll understand why once you've seen it. Um, we'll be looking in part two at this on device cam, which is a, uh, it's a clone. It's a Squipe clone that I purchased from China. Um, and it took a little while to get to me, um, notwithstanding the issues with the lovely Royal Mail. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we've got a bit of VT about that in part two. Um, and I should be vaping it like a trooper, as I have been doing all day. Mm -hmm. um, so that's all coming up after we have the titles, which I think need to come uh, now. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. Yes, it's me, it's Tuesday, it's Vapor Scene here on Vapor 12 TV. Uh, and just looking in chat there during the, uh, the, the opening titles, uh, and Mark Shaw said these last two orders from Fast Tech have taken eight and nine days from order to doorstep. Lucky chappy, I ordered my stuff on the 29th of May, um, and it did arrive last Thursday. However, I was red carded because I was up in the Northeast at the time. So I went down on Friday to pick it up, got to the post office, hobbled all the way down there on my dodgy knee, um, got to the door, realised on the back it said, please allow 48 hours. And I thought, are they going to have it? No, they didn't. So I went back on Saturday. Did they have it? No, they blinking didn't have it. Come back on Monday, they said. So I thought, bugger this for a game of soldiers, and I rearranged delivery. And it arrived this morning. Yeah. Um, so had I been at home last Thursday, I would have had the stuff. Um, and it was a tiny order, um, really. One little small jiffy bag. Um, however, it did take a little bit of time. Not as long as Dave Dawn's seven weeks for the mod he showed on the Haze Hour last night. I, I hasten to add. Um, and uh, yes, it's all working rather nicely. Uh, there it is. All whipped and coiled up and uh, ready to vape. And it has been vaping rather nicely all day. Yes, but I digress. Let's move on with the show. And we're going to start with the uh, usual news roundup. And we'll start with some UK stuff. Uh, and this was in the Daily Mail. Uh, and yes, why nicotine gum and patches might not be so safe after all. Hmm. Scientists discover the drug isn't just addictive. It can also cause cancer. Uh, aren't these the things they've been getting us to use for what, 30 years? Nicotine exposure causes thousands of mutations in a cell's DNA, they say. These are similar to those identified in cells experiencing oxidative stress. And oxidative stress is a known precursor to cancer. And they go on. Nicotine patches have helped many smokers keep the habit, but new research suggests that it may actually do more harm than good. A US study found nicotine alone could cause cancer. That's a bit of a turn up for the book, isn't it? Nicotine is one of 4,000 chemicals found in cigarette smoke. While many of these chemicals are recognised as carcinogens, nicotine has, until now, only been considered addictive rather than carcinogenic. It's heavily used in smoke and cessation products such as patches and gum. It is also now found in the increasing popular e-cigarette. 
and down the bottom there, the researchers found nicotine causes thousands of mutations called single nucleotide polymorphisms, SNPs, in exposed cells compared with the control cells that are not exposed to it. And the next one I have, we now have the broad picture of the genomic effects in nicotine, says Jasmine Bavara, Dr. Jasmine Bavara, lead author of the study. And these results are important, said Dr. Harold Garner, director of the Institute's Medical Informatics and Systems Division. Try saying that with a mouthful of gobstoppers. This is because for the first time they directly measure large numbers of genetic variations caused only by nicotine, showing that nicotine alone can mutate the genome and initiate a cancer state. This is particularly timely since nicotine is used as a smoking cessation aid. It's also particularly timely because uh, nicotine has been attacked from all quarters at the moment. Yes, so uh, it would be interesting to see the substance of this research uh, and it would be interesting to see what Dr. Farsalinos um, makes of the research as well. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that one. Uh, and moving on to a Scottish story. Yeah. Scotland's National Health Service officially admits e-cigarettes are safer than analogues. Uh, even though it's, that's spelt wrong, isn't it? Analogues? Yeah. For the first time in history, electronic cigarettes have been included in the official NHS Scotland guidance aimed at smokers looking to quit. In the past, it's believed some quit smoking services in Scotland simply turned away smokers wanting to use electronic cigarettes. But according to the new National Health Service guideline, uh, guidance, these people should not be told to stop. If there is even the smallest risk, they might go back to smoking tobacco cigarettes. And although the NHS still recommends smokers try licensed nicotine replacement products, like inhalers, patches, or gum, prevention of relapse to smoking is now its main priority. Uh, let's just go back to that one. <laughs> so they're still telling, them, telling us they're safe. Yeah. Interesting one, isn't it? I wonder if it will happen in the UK. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Yes, I totally agree with you, John T, but I'm not going to say that on air. <laughs> you can say it in chat, though. Um, I, must, I must pipe chat into the, into the screen at some point. Um, but unfortunately, tonight, I've got that plugged in um, and not my laptop. So uh, I can't put chat up. But uh, maybe I will next week. Who knows? Uh, so... Yes, interesting, um, interesting article there with Scottish NHS. And of course, in Scotland, you don't pay for your prescriptions um, or in Wales. However, we do in the UK, um, something like £8.10 or something like that. It's um, quite expensive now. Um, so, yes, it'd be interesting to see what the uh, NHS quit centres in the UK start doing with e-cigarettes, because as we know, uh, we have some... Uh, some good advice coming from the Leicestershire area um, from their smoking cessation centres. OK, let's move on to my little um, USA piece. Yeah, I've got a couple of stories. It's actually two stories, but there's two videos on one story, and you'll see why. Uh, and uh, we'll talk about that when they're done. See you in a minute. Well, the Canyon City Commission voted to pass an ordinance banning the use of electronic cigarettes among kids. News Channel 10's Molly Allen joins us now live in the News Center with details on the ordinance and who it will affect. The commission voted 4-1 to one to pass the proposed ordinance presented today by Canyon Chief of Police Del Davis, who says they're seeing more minors with cigarette devices. A lot more of these minors seen with these devices, so... We've got to put something in place. Right now, there are no state or federal regulations for electronic cigarettes, so minors can legally buy them. It's, it's a problem that our school uh, law enforcement, uh, our school resource officer has noticed. Uh, he, he confiscates them several times uh, you know, a week. The owner of an electronic cigarette shop in Canyon says this ordinance won't affect their business. As far as I know, the ordinance is to keep 18 or under 18 uh, kids from using the product, which we're all for. That's been our policy from day one, and that's been many vape shop policies that I know of. 
But one Canyon citizen thinks this is the city being too intrusive. We're going to start regulating e-cigs. Why don't we regulate energy drinks and regulate what's all the sugar intakes? And, you know, once we start regulating this, why don't we regulate all these other things? Because you're getting about the same effects. And sometimes those energy drinks and those substances that they're drinking and eating every day are far worse than what's inside of an electronic cigarette. This ordinance will work similar to a tobacco ordinance. If a minor is in possession, they will be issued a Class C misdemeanor with a fine of up to $500. Live in the News Center, Molly Allen, News Channel 10. At 5.30, some fast-moving thieves were caught on camera stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of merchandise from a specialty wholesaler. They were stealing e-cigarettes and equipment. Those vaporizers cost big bucks and are worth a lot of money on the black market. Local 10 News reporter Roger Losey is live in Dania Beach with more for us. Roger. Calvin, this electronic cigarette industry is a $2 billion industry. A lot of people are making money on this, and the thieves are trying to capitalize as well. This is what the crooks were after, the actual atomizers and the liquids that go in them, the stuff that the e-cigarette customers smoke. The way they got in was right through that back wall there. Two sheets of drywall. That's all that stood between the thief and his huge haul. Nearly a half million dollars worth of liquid tanks and batteries for electronic cigarettes. And you can see he had no trouble getting to the goods. Basically, when I walked in in the morning, we just saw a big mess here in the back. Justin Darman is the manager of the Dania Beach e-cigarette wholesaler, where workers are still adding up the losses to their inventory. It happened about 6 o'clock Sunday afternoon. The crook broke into the auto repair shop on the opposite side of the building, then busted through the drywall to get into the warehouse, where he spent several hours passing boxes through the wall. Notice that he stays close to the back wall of the space to avoid the motion detectors in the room. They think the crook loaded the stuff into a truck that was backed into the repair shop. In all, Darman estimates between three and four hundred thousand dollars worth of e-cigarette supplies were stolen, and he says this heist will have a ripple effect in this hot new industry because he is a major supplier for hundreds of retail stores around the country. I don't know what to tell my customers when I have about 1,200 customers is going to be waiting for their liquid and for the replacement. I don't have what to sell them. As a small business, it's going to affect me big time. It's going to put me a year back. The problem is it usually takes him one to three days to get his product to his customers, but it takes up to three to six weeks to get the stuff from China. They're really confident that this was a, not necessarily an inside job, but done by somebody who knew the inner workings of this building because there's just too many things that they didn't do to trigger the alarms. Broward Sheriff's Office is investigating. We are live in Dania Beach. I'm Roger Losey, Local 10 News. One of the hottest items on the market, and tonight e-cigarettes were what a bunch of thieves were after. Good evening, I'm Jackie Nespro. And I'm Trina Robinson. Police are investigating a break-in at a Dania Beach warehouse after the company was targeted for a second time in a year. Team 6's Justin Finch is live in Dania Beach with all the details. Justin. Yeah, Trina, really deja vu of the worst kind of for the team at eCigarettesWholesale.com. As you mentioned, they were also hit about six months ago at their Hollywood shop. And now this robbery here, that's the wall that thieves reportedly got into here yesterday. This robbery now leaving them about a half million dollars in the hole. Surveillance cameras were rolling Sunday afternoon when this guy broke into the eCigarettesWholesale.com warehouse on Tiger Tail Boulevard in Dania. The MTS. How they did it, says BSO, was to first break into an auto business behind e-cigarettes wholesale and then pull a truck in behind them to haul off the goods. A plan that manager Justin Darman suspects could be an inside job. How do you feel as a business owner knowing that perhaps you know the person who did this to you? Um, I'm trying to think for myself that I really don't want to know that person. The person, it seems, cut through the auto shop wall to pop into this e-cigarette stockpile, all as workers were off enjoying the Father's Day weekend. And because no motion sensors were triggered, no alarms went off to alert them that they had just lost about a half million dollars in inventory of things like this. It goes on top of the battery um, and it stores the liquid and that's the tank you smoke out of. Products, Darwin says, like this Segali smoking device that are unique to his warehouse. And they took a lot of this. The burglary is not just bad for their business, but also others that they supply across the country, says Darman. It's like selling gold. It's nobody can get it. We are the only authorized dealer in the United States to sell this stuff. 
Now, you're looking live at a few of the brands they carry here, Univapor, Aspire, and many others here. If you recognize them, you might want to give authorities a call. As for the guy they're looking for, we don't have much to go on here. A baseball cap, his face is covered, also wearing a T-shirt, wearing gloves. Again, if you know anything, you were urged to call BSO at Crime Stoppers, that number 954-493-TIPS. We are live in Dania Beach. I'm Justin Finch, NBC6 South Florida. Yes. Now, I've seen those videos quite a few times, obviously, because I've uh, had to dump them down and edit them and everything that we need to do to get them out to you. Um, but two things struck me there. Um, first of all, if I've got a million dollars worth of vaping kit in my warehouse, I wouldn't have it with two sheets of plasterboard and a bit of insulation protecting it. I'd have it in a brick room. <laughs> Bricks, you know, those big solid things that are difficult to break through, not a dry wall which you can cut through with a Stanley knife. I mean, go figure. Um, I wonder if he's put his prices up um, because uh, it's like gold now. I don't know. Uh, and the other thing that I, uh, that I saw and uh, someone else mentioned in chat, I think it was Max, was uh, even the supplier called it smoking. Vaping is not smoking, for goodness sake. If the suppliers can't get that right, there's no hope for any of us, is there? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Craziness, craziness. I do feel for the guy if he has been robbed. Um, you know, it must have been a real easy job for the robber, the burglar who burglarised it. Um, a quick jimmy of the uh, of the shutter, and then um, oh, I'll just put my fist through the dry, <laughs> through the uh, the drywall, through a couple of bits of plasterboard. Craziness. Um, but anyway, I hope. Uh, I hope he gets his stuff back or gets financially recompensed and all that kind of malarkey. Um, and it's happened in this country as well. You know, quite a few of our places have been done. I know Liberty Flights has been raided twice uh, in the last year, which is not good for business. But there you go. Now then, I'll have a look at chat in a second uh, <laughs> while this next video is on. Uh, and I mentioned on last week's show, I had another busy week um, because I was going down to Bristol at the weekend to do a bit of work. Um, so I was talking to Disco Des uh, on chat last Thursday during uh, Dave's show uh, and we arranged to meet up for a beverage. So um, here's what happened. Here you go Des, here's the video. Well good afternoon. Uh, it's, uh, it's Saturday afternoon uh, and I am just setting off to drive down to Bristol because as I mentioned on last week's show, uh, I am working down there uh, and I'm going to be hooking up with Mr. Disco Des. Yes, so if you're in chat, Des, hello. <laughs> so uh, I'm heading down to my hotel and then i um, going to have a little rest and then nip down and see Des and uh, you will see what happens um, shortly. So um, catch you after my um, three and a half hour journey. <laughs> Bye. I have two shops or two sites basically um, in Plymouth. Um, they're both flavour vapour shops that I uh, go and collect every couple of weeks or so. So far I've collected around about two, it must be about 100, 120 signatures. Um, I also went and dropped a box round to Andy Oakley down in uh, Torquay, the designer of the boxes as well, and had a good chat with Andy and Mandy down there. Um, so. It's going, it's going reasonably well. We push in for more signatures all the time. I speak to the people in the shop and uh, try and get them engaged by usually telling them that some of their competition are, are perhaps beating them. Um, but yes, it's, it's, it's quite good. It uh, takes a little bit of time to enter the data afterwards and sometimes people don't include things like the postcode or something like that, so you have to look that up online. But uh, generally, no, it, it's, it's, it's going reasonably well. Um, 
If uh, you'd like to get involved in the EFEI campaign, it's quite easy to do. Uh, just Google EFEI um, and get on the EFEI website. There's all the information on there on how to um, become part of the EFEI. Uh, you can get forms um, that you can download as a PDF and print off yourself. So you can just take them around to your friends, your family. Don't forget yourself, your partners, your wives, your sisters, brothers, etc. And just collect those signatures because every single signature counts. And there's a mobile phone app as well, um, so that makes it very, very easy. You've, so you don't even have to print the forms off. You've, you've got something there available in your pocket, um, which you can collect the signatures on, and they're immediately registered on the EFI website. The vaping scene in Bristol, it's a bit of a difficult one. Um, I don't spend a massive amount of time actually socialising in Bristol itself, but generally, most places that I've been, including a Weatherspoons, although it was a little while ago, um, I vaped in and, and, and not been challenged. Uh, we've got some good local vendors, um, so people are used to seeing people out and about vaping. You don't get the second looks anymore that you used to once upon a time. People uh, tend to accept it, so it's it's a it's a fairly good scene. There's more shops come coming through now, so yeah, it's uh, I think it's quite quite healthy. Today um, I've got a TZ Max here in 18350 mode with a Pro Tank and Airflow control on the bottom. With um, I'm sure most of you know what it is by now. It's uh, Red Astaire in there. I'm a bit picky so uh, there's not many flavors I like um, fire and ice red astaire and a couple of others is it generally tends to be it I wouldn't say I'm a menthol freak um, I have been um, I tried to get away from it um, oh um, it's uh, I buy the concentrate by the way and actually mix my own to my own requirements and I'm slowly dropping the nick down at the moment of about 15 milligrams and I've been up over 20, vape to 18 for ages, but now down to about 15. So the long term is just to reduce it. I might knock it out entirely, I might not. I'm quite happy with vaping. I've been vaping four years, nine months, 13 days today. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy as I am. The best way to start vaping is really to, uh, to engage with other vapors. Um, this can be done in a number of ways. If you know somebody that's been vaping for a while, have a good chat with them. Or get on the forums, where we're well supported with forums in the UK. Um, there's a lot of good advice available on there from the forums. Seek people that have been vaping for a while. Certainly seek their uh, advice because it can just help you avoid some of the pitfalls that um, that experience, um, experienced people can, can advise you on and help you to avoid. My favourite mod at the moment varies. Uh, I've got a number of mechanicals, although to be quite honest, I, I tend to use them with kicks in. Uh, this teaser Max is hardly ever from my side, but um, I've got an MVP, uh, Nemesis's clones. Uh, a 69 mod, no sniggering in the back, please. Um, yeah, so I'll pick up something. Um, if I'm out for the day, I usually take two or three devices out with me and a couple of juices. Um, MVP's great um, because obviously you can use it in pass-through mode and you'll, you'll never run out of battery. So um, not a, a totally sort of like defined answer for you. As I say, it can, it can depend uh, on what I'm doing, but uh, yeah, TZ Max very good. I like tubulars, but there again, the MVP is also very good. Wow, what am I looking forward to about Vapefest? Well, um, this will be my, um, yeah, actually my third Vapefest. Um, I've been to the two before at Tamworth. They're always such a good laugh. It's great to catch up with people uh, that you know from online and see them in the flesh. See the new kit that the vendors are bringing out, try the new flavors, and just generally sit down and have a good chin wag, maybe a couple of beers, uh, and 
yeah, it's 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 a it's great fun if you haven't been before, especially if you're new to vaping. I thoroughly recommend you come along, and uh, the tips you'll pick up will be invaluable for you. And it's back to me. Oh, I'm, I'm all, all over the place. Isn't it? My chair's a bit wobbly. Um, yes. <laughs> Thanks for Des uh, for meeting up on Saturday. We had uh, a good chin wag and uh, some beverage. I only had the one there because I was driving. Uh, Des can attest to that, can't you, Des? Yes. <laughs> That's true. Uh, and yes, Mr. Sutton, that was indeed Clevedon. And you could see Welsh Wales there in the background. Uh, and you were invited, but you were awfully busy editing. Yes. Um, but uh, I'll get you next time. Definitely get you next time. Um, so, EFVI, don't forget, www.efvi.eu. That will take you there, uh, and you can uh, have a look at what you can do. Uh, and there's also, I noticed today, a Polish EFVI on Facebook. There you go. I haven't a clue what that says, um, but if you speak Polish, you will know exactly what that says. Uh, and then, of course, don't forget that VapeFest 2014. Oh yes, is at uh, all the wukvapefest.com and it's on uh, August the 2nd, which is very, very close indeed. Uh, and uh, yes, this year will be my third vape fest as well. Hoping I will get there. Um, we'll have to wait and see exactly what happens. Right, I am about six minutes over already. So uh, we're going to go to the break. <laughs> and when we come back, uh, we're going to be uh, looking at this. Yes, the... Uh, the clone, the scrape clone, or the fake, the fake scrape, as I call it. Um, so I will see you in two minutes. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health EV, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. Now it's back to Vaporscene on Vaporchells TV. Vaporscene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. And we are back in the room. Hello. And just watching chat through that. He didn't look like he had lots of chins, Des. What are you, matter? <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, but very good. It was, uh, yes, very good bit of ET, that. And some good answers to the questions that I chucked at you. Anyway, let's move swiftly on um, because we're going to go to the VT now. I did um, about this little scrape. 
Um, I will see you very shortly. Enjoy. Some of you may remember uh, a few weeks ago when I showed you the Evix Supreme um, that I said I had ordered some new kit uh, and I was just waiting for it to arrive. Well, it has arrived. Oh yes. Uh, a few bits and pieces from um, China, um, from Fastec. Other, of course, Chinese sellers are indeed available. Um, but this, along with some other bits and pieces, which I may or may not show you later, um, arrived. Uh, and this is a, well, basically, it's a Squape clone. And it's the Talifun Squape clone. And it looks a little bit like that. Yes. So let's have a look at what you get in the box. You get a little baggie with some wick, some replacement O-rings and some wire. You get the Allen key, which some people on some reviews said you don't get, but in fact you do uh, in this particular model. And then of course you get the Squipe clone itself. Very nice, very shiny. Uh, and I do believe it has a Pyrex tank. Replaceable or removable 510 drip tip, which is handy. And you can see in there in the very top, the bell fits in um, to prevent leakage, etc. So it's basically a two part affair. Oh, that's actually it's a three part affair because there's a part inside. Um, so we'll take that out. We'll just put in the Allen key and unscrew this centre bell. There we go. Uh, and it all looks like it's um, anodised aluminium to keep it from being conductive. But if you look inside, and I'm not sure if I can zoom in hard enough or not. If I zoom in, you're not going to see, I don't think. It is a bit dirty in there. Yeah, so before I do anything with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the ultrasonic cleaner um, just to clean everything because um, it looks like there's maybe some kind of machine oil or something in there. And what I don't want to do is start vaping on it uh, until I've cleaned it all up. Um, so I'll be doing that in a second once I've uh, once I've shown you the other pieces. Um, you've got there the, the deck where you build your coil. Again, it's the non-conductive deck on the top uh, with the little thumb screws, which you can get your thumbs in. Um, I have big thumbs, as you know. Um, so a little screwdriver may not go amiss. And then that is where the other O-ring goes. And there's an O-ring on the top of the bell that screws in to stop the leakage. Um, so those basically are your three parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give these a really good clean and a dry um, in the ultrasonic before I start. Uh, and then once it's uh, all clean and I'm pretty, uh, pretty happy that it is clean, um, then um, I'll put a coil on and we'll get it wicked up. So um, I'll be back shortly. I'm going to clean this now. What I've got in the ultrasonic cleaner um, is some hand hot water um, just out of the tap um, and a couple of capfuls of this cleaner called Sea Clean uh, and I get this from uh, Maplins and it's made from seaweed uh, and it's quite a gentle cleaner. Um, I've got the uh, mod and all the pieces in the little plastic tray uh, and I've set my time on the ultrasonic for 480 seconds. Give it a nice good clean. I'm just going to move that so it doesn't touch anything as it moves around. If I can. I don't want it to scratch everything else. There we go. Lovely. Right, I'm going to set this going and then um, We'll see what it's like when it comes out.
and we have finished. And there we go. All the bits in there. And it looks a nice cleanness. It really does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this away and get it all rinsed off and dried and then we'll be back. Here I am uh, and I have cleaned up the mod um, and it was shiny before but it's uh, even shinier now. <laughs> um, always a good idea really to give them a good clean when you get them because you don't know if there's any remnants of any machining oil or protectant or whatever um, so gives you something to start with uh, and that's now uh, nice and clean. Let's blow a little bit of water out of that mouthpiece. Okay so let's put it back together uh, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install the bell so we'll just start to screw it in with my finger and then we'll just tighten it up with the allen key. I'm not going to do it heavy heavy tight just tight enough there we go that's done we'll put the uh, mouthpiece back in so that's our top done and the next thing we're going to need to do is to install our wick and coil and I'm going to grab an MVP there we go and I have a little screwdriver but you don't really need those, you can use your fingers, but it's going to be easier for me. So I'm just going to loosen off those two screws, like so. I've already made a coil, uh, and this is the coil, and this is eight wraps of um, 0.28 canthal. And I've already fitted this once to get the fit, so there you go, it just fits in there like that. And we're then going to just tighten it up around the wires like so. I could show you how to build a coil but I think you've probably seen that quite a few times now uh, and I built it around this little screwdriver so I'm just going to offer that up to the coil to make sure we've got it all nicely in the right place uh, and everything is hunky-dory with it. There we go. I'll just tighten up these screws to make sure it's nice and tight. And I'll trim the tails very shortly. So there we go. We've got the coil in place and we'll give it some power. Have I got this turned on? That's the question. Yeah, I've got it turned on. And it's telling me that there is nothing on it. So the MVP doesn't like it. Let's put it on the EVIC and see. Because it's going to be round about 1.9 ohms I think, something like that. And it's telling me it's 2 ohms on the uh, EVIC uh, and I'm currently at 18 watts so there we go and it's glowing very nicely uh, and yeah very nicely, all uniformly as well. Do that one more time for you. Yeah, what a glow. So, um, let's give that time to cool down a tad. So what I've done is I've taken some cotton from a cotton makeup pad and I've just teased a little bit out and I'm just fashioning that now into 
a little cotton rope wick like that uh, and this is going to be going into the coil there we go and it's obviously longer than I need but I will be trimming it very shortly so let's bring in the evic with the coil on that way around so you can see it and I'll just zoom in a little bit for you there we go uh, and also what I've done is I've fashioned from a little piece of canthal a little puller following Mr Dawn's lead there you go so it just goes through the coil and then you just put a little piece of your wicking through a little bit of spit on one end helps sometimes and I'll just pull that through and it's as easy as that and now we just need to trim it off a little bit and it needs to be just in the ends of the channels just down like that so we're going to trim that there helps if you've got some decent scissors and these aren't particularly brilliant in fact they're rubbish totally rubbish but we'll work with them because <laughs> that's what I've got them in it this is what happens when you cut too many wires with your little scissors um, they get blunt so that's one end and the other end's almost going to break off so I'm going to do that there we go so yes there we go now I have here some of my peppermint caramel I'm just going to give that a bit of a soaking yes there we go so if I give that some power ooh, we have vapor <sighs> lots of vapor so now we should really trim these wires and I'm going to use my little scissors again I'll have to buy some more So that's one, and we'll do the second one, two, and I'll just use my tweezers here just to finagle this wick so it's nicely in the channels. there we go now then we need to fill our other section and that is easy enough just in between the bell and the unit itself and this holds five mils and I'm going to give it um, ooh, probably half that for now I'm just going to fill it to the top of the uh, the window. Squeezy, squeezy, squeezy. This is a uh, PG VG mix with peppermint flavouring and also some caramel. Yeah, which is very nice. So I filled that to just on the window, the top of the window. And now of course we need to uh, put our bottom section on, which I'm going to do now. Introduce the bottom section, line it up, and screw it together. And there we go and that now is ready to vape on 
So let's put it on the EVIC and the EVIC is telling me it's 1.9 ohms uh, and at 18 watts it's 5.84 volts. You see my little picture there. <laughs> so let's give it a blast. And you can see there it's producing quite nicely. So um, that's my little Squape clone from Fastech. Yeah. So uh, we'll go back to the studio and um, I'll show you some more. Tatty bye. And it is indeed back to me through this haze of vapour. Um, <laughs> just watching chat as that was playing through there. Um, Kizzy, the ultrasonic cleaner, uh, the one I have is an Ultra 7000, may also be known as a JPL Ultra 7000. Um, I bought mine from Maplin's when it was on offer. Um, I've checked the prices as that video was playing out and currently they've got them at 44.99, but you can get them from Amazon for 33.99 yeah uh, and this is the uh c clean c clean 2 i've got uh, and it was on offer at the same time i got two bottles for the price of one uh, and it works rather nicely um for most things really i've cleaned my watch in it and um, i've used it for the different metal mod parts um so uh, yeah works rather well and it will last a couple of washes uh, but i tend to just throw the water away after one clean um just because it's relatively cheap enough to do. Um, you don't actually need to use any cleaner at all, you can just use water because the ultrasonic action uh, is, uh, is the main thing. But uh, I found the sea clean to be rather good. And yes, I do have the wick going down the channels. Um, I did try it without um, and it was just as good. So it's horses of courses on that one. Um, I haven't had any dry burns and I've been vaping it like a trooper all day. So. Uh, I'll see what it's like tomorrow. Maybe I will get a dry one. I don't know. Um, but uh, I'll try it with some different wick as well. I just thought I'd do a cotton one to start off with. Yes. And anyway, what else have chat got to say? Oh yes, whip it up. Yes, I did notice that you came in late. <laughs> There's no good. It's no good you saying don't tell Marco because I was watching chat. Yes, because I do these days. I watch chat through the videos. Um, <laughs> but I'll let you off on this occasion. Um, seeing as it is uh, World Cup and all that. Um, so yes, that was the uh, the fake scrape. Uh, and I've got another little one next week, which I haven't filmed yet. Um, it's a little rebuildable dripper um, and it's pre-coiled now. I might just coil it up and I might even shove a tri-coil on it. Um, we will have to wait and see. I've got plenty of heavy gauge canthal to use. <laughs> and lots of uh, 19 gauge hypos I can use to uh, coil it with so uh, yes maybe that will be for next week so uh, that was it that is the show for Tuesday the 17th of June 2014 oh yes now don't forget tomorrow night it's not in your tip it's the haze hour no it's not the haze hour it's VT talk tomorrow night getting my shows and my days mixed up now Yes, tomorrow night it is VT Talk because Gary is busy. Um, so Gary will be here on Thursday with Tin Your Tip. And don't forget now, after Sunday, um, and Dave is going to take some time off. So there was, uh, he won't be here on Sunday for Dave's Tackle Box. Um, not sure if we're going to have anything else going out or not currently. Um, but keep an eye on the forum and on Facebook and also on the Vape Charles TV uh, Twitter feed. Uh, and you will find out. And I'm sure we will fill you in on the next couple of shows. Uh, and then, of course, it's back round to next week, Monday with the Haze Hour, and I am back next Tuesday. Thank you for tuning in, and I will see you all next week. Tatty bye.
Vapazine is proudly sponsored by Health eVape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid.